Greetings, fellow Querents. Welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all happy, safe, and doing well. I had a really strong urge just now to do a, um, just a short set of readings, a kind of generic topic of what important event is upcoming that the universe wants you to know about um, and wants to be prepared for. So let's get straight to it. Not much of a preamble for this one. <laughs> Alrighty. Uh, how many timelines? Should we do three? I feel like four. Four was coming through earlier. Okay. You got the prayer pointing east for your first timeline. I, I don't... I want to another one. Oh, something's jumping. Okay. <laughs> the dead end east for your second timeline. Um, what else? What else? The fault line upright for your third timeline and what is our last one here the creator i'm gonna put that north the creator north for your fourth timeline so as per usual the timestamps will be down below um if you're new to, to pick a cards then pick one of these timelines and go to the timestamp for this reading all right i will see you in your relevant timeline greetings fellow querent welcome to timeline number one you picked the prayer pointing east. This is a reading that's fairly generic. We're just looking at what important events do does the universe want you to know about upcoming. So let's take a look. Let's get right to it. <laughs> All right. Hi, baby. Somebody wants to be part of the reading. <laughs> um, so with the prayer east, I heard I just heard something about getting your prayers answered. Um, but the fact that it's sideways, I feel like it's kind of like, I'm not going to lie, it's like getting your prayer answered in a way that... Pff, got cat hair in my mouth. <laughs> Baby, can you please? Thank you. Um, in a way that it's like it, the problem is not being solved in the way that you thought it would be or you hoped it would be. So um, let's take a deeper look. I'm going to transfer you to my lap, please. Thank you. No, baby, no. I'm reading right now. Oh my gosh, okay. You're gonna have to go that way then. I'm sorry. <laughs> Please excuse the disruption. <laughs> um, yeah, but I feel like... Violet, come on. Okay. That jumped right out. It's like your prayer is technically getting answered. But it's not quite exactly how you expected. Um, I get a very neutral feeling from this though. So it's not like, it's not like bad in any way. It's just very different than what you were hoping for. Um, okay, interesting. Having to do with an expectation around bad relationships. Um, like social relationships that aren't good for you with the, the three of cups in reverse the six of emotions northwest we have the king of voices or king of swords and this is the eight of wands pointing south southeast by late you're gonna have to oh my goodness you're gonna have to go over there sweetie come on come on, come on. go 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 <laughs> Ace of Cups in reverse. Oh my gosh, I'm sorry. This is not like looking like the most mm, um, pleasant experience for sure. Uh, why is this being called out though? So there's a lot of challenging emotions. There's a lot of here with the Six of Cups and the King of Swords and it's in reverse, sort of. It's kind of tricky because this card's like perpendicular to what we're usually expecting, but... It's giving like distorted King of Swords energy. So something around with Six of Cups is definitely giving like childhood intergenerational patterns kind of energy. And then you have Ace of Cups in reverse. Hmm. I want to say with the King of Swords, ugh, there's some sort of like anxiety around how something is playing out. Um, it's almost like I feel like your inner child really wants something to work out a certain way, but now it, but then it's not. Um, let me dig deeper. It's a little confusing. 
Okay. That's a lot of cards. Okay, five of swords here. We have six of pentacles in reverse. That's kind of off camera. Okay. Um, we have the moon upright. We have nine of wands upright. And we have queen of pentacles upright. There is, okay, so with the moon, there's something, it's almost like it feels like you're waiting for a miracle, but there's a mystery around how it's going to happen. I feel like you do have faith that it's going to happen, but then with the king of swords, the sworded energy here, there's like a worry that is definitely like intergenerational. Like it's a pattern you've inherited from people in your family and your lineage where it's sort of like you have the faith, but the logic of how it's going to happen is really going to like there's moments of frustration and kind of like hopelessness in the context of feeling like there's no way this could possibly work out like every avenue i can possibly think about it doesn't make sense there's no logical way any of this could happen so like and we have queen of pentacles here with the nine of wands you know nine of wands is usually wounded warrior energy over here it's not of inspiration it's a less um kind of destitute depiction of the card but i i am getting like a lot of significance in the fact that these two are together they're beside each other the nine of pentacles feels like because usually that's like material stability financial stability it feels like with the queen of pentacles it's almost like you have an image that you're upholding um kind of naturally like what i mean by that is sort of like people don't perceive your private life so much so they're not seeing the fact that you're not as like you don't feel as materially stable as you appear in public and it's not even because you're trying to project an image it just is like a natural i don't know like your energy feels very put together you you have a very grounded energy and with this nine of inspiration, the nine of wands, I feel like the fact that it's giving not so much of a destitute energy, it is like, it's almost like you are making some sort of notoriety out of the hardships that you've gone through. And that's why it's presenting as less destitute, because it's almost like artful in the way that you are presenting it or about to present it. And there's a lot of mystery. I keep getting coming back to the mystery. With the five of swords up here. Okay, so. Mm, interesting, okay. I'm seeing that this has to do with something you are about to do is going to pub like make some certain information public, whether it feels like it's about you. It's something about you communicating your struggles and what you've gone through. Um, oh, I see. And with the prayer, your prayer is not answered. It feels like what you're about to release to the world, to your community, to wherever it is you're releasing this information. It feels like it is. It's it's basically like the whole gist of it is like this is my prayer that wasn't answered, <laughs> um, but your prayer kind of was answered in like a roundabout way, and it's like the kind of like the story and the tale of that. And part of it is talking about, so this wounded warrior aspect of like, this is the tribulations and trials I've gone through. This is the mystery I had to survive. This is with the three of cups in reverse. Okay, and so with the five of swords, eight of wands in reverse, I feel like this is an energy of... Mm, I'm hearing isolation. So with the three of... I'm really getting a bit tripped up on the three of cups in reverse, not gonna lie. But okay, with the five of swords and the eight of wands, this feels like... It feels like talking about why you weren't able to go through with something or you were barely able to go through with something. The fact that the Eight of Wands is like southeast, it's like not quite like unable to go through it, but it's almost like the story of like just barely ab being able to make th it through it. And then with the five of voices, the way it's depicted here with like the, the woman meditating, it's almost like splitting of the ego. It's almost like alter egos, like the... It's like the whole idea of like the, the angel and the devil on your shoulder. Like uh, it's like a story of the two sides of yourself battling and integrating and alchemizing. And with the three of cups in rivers, I feel like it's okay. I'm getting a couple of things here. I don't feel like you're necessarily talking about 
a betrayal. I feel like that's what actually happened, though. It's like a betrayal of a lot of people, of the way that they saw you. Um, it may have not necessarily been... Like, they may have been fed the wrong information, so you might not be taking it super personally, which is why it's not feeling... It just It's feeling like you're not necessarily talking about that aspect specifically, but it's kind of implied. Like, when people come across whatever this is you're releasing... It's like the underlying energy is like, I didn't have the support I needed. I was alone. No one really helped me. Those are kind of the main energies coming through. And I feel like that's, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, I feel like that's almost exactly what you want to put out. Um, but yeah, I guess it's just kind of showing up to say like, even if you don't really focus on this so much, it is going to come through energetically. Like people will understand that you were not treated well essentially yeah interesting and four of uh, four of wands on the back so that's a lot of intense energies right off the bat what is going to happen with this situation um what do you need to know about how this is going to happen the eternal child hmm We have death, the Hierophant in reverse, and eight of emotions, eight of cups reverse. I feel like, okay, so which am I getting called to? I'm, I'm getting called to here first. Eight of cups in reverse. Um, I think you might be surprised in that There's a transformation of a situation, of something related to this situation, where you don't have to walk away from something. It's like a, tra a transformation of the situation. I want to say with the, the Hierophant in reverse, it's like a transformation of not learning from the situation but not so much on your part. It's like, it's almost like you're teaching other people through whatever it is you're releasing. And it's going to transform the fact that I feel like in the past with the nine of wands being upright, but then the hierophant being in reverse, it's like people may have seen you express the emotions and like, the, it's almost like kind of telling part of the story, but they didn't necessarily learn anything from it. It's more like they just kind of witnessed a part of it witness part of your experience so it's like in the future there's a transformation of how people see this whole situation and that they will suddenly not suddenly but it's like there's something you're doing that's enabling them to learn from what you went through what the experiences are or were i want to say so interestingly i almost feel like this is a separate situation but it's very much related so it's like this could be one community, one group of people, one industry, one workplace, you know, one social circle. And then this is like the other one. I feel like there are specific people here in this. It's almost like this situation causes more anxiety, hence like the queen of, uh, sorry, the king of swords and then the six of cups. And it makes you feel like disconnected from people. Um, sorry, I'm just like, you can feel like the, my, my intuition, like agreeing. <laughs> it makes you feel disconnected from people. Over here, there's an issue of uh, some sort of authority figure that um, I think you have of past conflict with. And it's sort of like, there's no emotions to take from this place anymore. Like... There is no emotions to, um, it's like your cup is not being filled with the ace of cups here. The underlying energy of all of this is your inner child is coming more to the forefront and becoming more comfortable expressing itself. And I feel like that transformation is directly like something about your inner child, um, kind of gaining this ability, I guess you could say. 
Um, but yeah, what exactly else do we need to know about this the hermit? The fool. The wheel. Okay, interesting. I want a couple more. Um, nine of cups, queen of wands in reverse. And that is ace of swords in reverse. Okay, yeah, this is kind of the message I was getting. So when I was putting on the wheel and the fool, the hermit, I really just strongly got this message of... Um don't feel obligated to go out to things or interact with people scenarios that you don't want to i feel like the reason this is coming through is because this whole like release of whatever this is it's going to attract people who want to be in your social circle um i'm getting called to the three of cups in reverse here i feel like there will be people wanting to be part of your life and your social circle to kind of take up your energy and your time who aren't like they don't really have good intentions um i'm seeing specifically like very needy intentions like it's kind of like the idea of when people have like they feel entitled to access your energy and they get very territorial when you take it away from them this means like you may not even be explicitly taking away from them but people feel like they lost you on some level So there's going to be an influx of people who are suddenly wanting to be in your energy, wanting to butter you up, but like they don't, like they're not really having a real reason to be there other than to just be possessive and, you know, kind of like bathe in your energy and be able to say to other people that they were with you. That's another big one coming through. Um, so just be like very discerning is the the advice coming through here. And I feel like you don't have an issue with that. Um, I would say just the main thing is like, don't rush into anything it's, and listen to your intuition, like check your intuition. Um, because right now it's kind of critical for you to be in this upright hermit mode. It's not to say you should totally be alone, but it, it's more like the message of when you are alone, like it's extremely like productive, cathartic for your inner child. And it's like you are healing from this stressful situation over here where you feel disconnected from everyone. Um, it's kind of like you're reclaiming the ability to feel connected with people, even if you're not like directly involved with them. And so I think one of the challenging aspects of this, Rosie, not right now, baby. Baby, come on. <sighs> These two sometimes, she literally just like walked beside me and let it was like the loudest meow. <laughs> Baby, come on. That's my flu cleaning. Oh my gosh, these two. Um, what was I saying though? So I feel like one of the th challenging aspects here is you will get a rush of like when you release this information you will get a rush of validation, I think, and you will be in this full energy. You will feel like the wheel is upright again. Um, so it might be very tempting. Like you might feel kind of high on the feeling of like, oh my gosh, I finally did this. And like, people are finally seeing me and like whatever I'm trying to communicate to them. And um it may be really tempting to just agree to everything so the advice really coming strongly through here is just like don't uh agree to everything or at least like take the time and make sure that if you do agree to anything to interact with people go out whatever make sure you take the time to like make a very centered stable grounded decision to do so um coming from like this upright nine of cups energy make sure there's no one else influencing your choices too um, because what people are going to try to do, I mean, like, this is more of a subconscious thing. They probably won't see it this way, but they're going to try to put you in this queen of, queen of wands, uh, reverse and the ace of swords reverse energy. They, they want to just have you possess you, be around you. And it's going to tire you out, not just because it's like not really well invested energy, but also the idea that, um, 
you'll probably realize really quickly that you have outgrown people or you're not really like able to tolerate the way that they operate in this um in the same way that you have in the past and it's going to drain you like it, it will put you in this queen of wands reverse ace of swords reverse energy where you might become you know like just very short-tempered and like tired and exhausted and uh not really able to kind of like embody the the sense of self the personality that you actually want to bring to the world the energy that you want to bring to the world all right i feel like that's pretty much the message so thank you so much for watching i hope this helps good luck with this future event that seems important and challenging um it seems like you have a lot on your plate and a lot of people to kind of mediate energy between so i really wish you all the best luck in this um and thank you so much for watching i love you all so much um i really appreciate you coming and watching these videos so if you want to support me there is a tip jar down below if you feel like a little generous um appreciated but never obligated uh helping me with the channel is also great so you can like the video share it with your friends if you think they would um benefit um, comments if you want to share your experience. I love reading your experiences and the most uh, helpful thing you can do is subscribe to the channel if you like these readings. Um, yeah, so thank you so much and I hope to see you again in future videos. Have a wonderful rest of existence. Greetings fellow Quarant. Welcome to timeline number two. If you picked the dead end pointing east, then this is your reading. So let's get into it. We're doing a pretty generic trying to aim for kind of short readings about um, an important event that's upcoming that your guides or the universe wants you to be aware of, wants you to have insight about, maybe perhaps even wants to warn you about. So let's take a look. With the dead end pointing east, mm, I get this feeling with the hand, oh my, I, and like the hand in it which I never really noticed before. I get this feeling like something that you thought was a dead end. There is kind of a resolution to it. Um, it's not like the perfect resolution, but it makes it like workable is what I want to say. I think you were expecting that there's just no way this can work out, um, but it feels like there's actually is a way it can work out in a way where you are meeting whatever goals you need to meet um getting whatever you want like done um it's benefiting you somehow uh let's take a look okay i don't want that whole pile okay the lovers upright page of cups six of wands in reverse interesting okay in the hermit that's uh northwest let's get a couple more i'll take these the Devil Upright, Five of Wands Upright. Hmm. Hmm. Um, I'm getting called to take, okay, a Ten of Swords on the back. I'm feeling called to take a couple Archetypes cards as well. So I'm getting pulled mostly to the Page of Cups here first. And the fact that it's beside the Six of Wands in reverse is, um... A little tricky. I'm getting really called to the octopus tentacles that I've also never noticed. There's a lot of imagery coming through that like... Yeah, and there's like a forest in there. Okay. In the womb area. Hmm. There's something like... Hold on one sec. I feel like the other cards will clarify a bit. The prayer in reverse, interesting. That's the face card for the first timeline. The venom. Oh, interesting, okay. Pointing east. It feels like you're going to have to explain to someone why something's not working out, why like it's not the right choice for you. It's kind of like you're trying to get out of this Ten of Swords energy. You're trying to release yourself from it. That's what's like it's it's reversed it feels like um 
I'm getting really cold to the fish in this as well. Something about the page of swords, like, or sorry, page of cups. It's like, there's a situation that's making you sick, like with the venom. There's a choice you're making around a situation where it's like you aren't, you're following your heart in the sense that you don't feel victorious in this. It's like your prayer hasn't been answered. Like you thought you wanted this situation to happen and now it's happening and it's like not what you wanted. It doesn't make you feel, it makes you feel like you failed rather than succeeded. So you're following your heart and not, and choosing not to participate past a certain point because you're trying not to get sick. Like you're trying not to get sick from the stress, sick from the just like extra kind of like labor you have to do it to give into the situation. It feels like the situation itself is uh, kind of more represented here. I want another archetypes card for this, the pilgrim in reverse. Yeah, okay, so it's like, for on your side, the reason you're choosing not to engage, or at least that in your mind, that's what you want, um, is because you feel like this opportunity or situation you feel stuck. You feel like you are attached to the chaos. Like you can't leave. You feel like, like something's not letting you leave. There's some sort of condition or like the way something is architected. It's sort of like you have to stay for a certain amount. I feel like if anything, it's actually architected for you to have to stay for like a long time. And you're trying to get out early. It's almost like you're trying to avoid being trapped in something. So we were taking a time out with the hermit to kind of reconsider your options um, kind of analyze the situation and figure out, okay, like, am I just getting triggered or is this actually like as bad as I'm perceiving it? And it, I feel like it is, um, if you need the validation, which I don't necessarily think you do, but like, it's, you're attached to the situation. It's very chaotic. There's an attachment to the chaos that this situation has. So it's almost like this, the people in this like thrive on chaos and you're not allowed to go out and do what you want to do. Like there is this implied energy that you are not... Don't mind the oven <laughs> background. Um, it's I guess that's confirmation. Like it's you are not like if you do something outside of the box, so to speak, you won't be treated well. You won't be seen as a pilgrim. You won't be be seen as being like innovative. You will just be seen as like kind of the energy that other people want to project on you is like you're doing weird things alone. Like, okay, let me explain that. It's sort of like you are, because I feel like you're kind of isolating yourself from the situation to avoid involving yourself too much. So other people are trying to project on you that you just like are trying really hard to make it on your own. I think they don't really understand the fact that you're choosing, like they might on some level, but they're kind of in denial. They're kind of in denial that you are choosing to just not engage. You're like you're kind of done with the situation. So it's like, they want to project this idea that you just don't know what you're doing. Um, maybe you're not meeting like certain thresholds or targets that would um, make it look like you're like excelling. Uh, because you're choosing just to just not do it. And it's like they they want to project this idea that you're trying to go off on your own and do it all on your own and you're not successful at that. And it's like this distorted like pilgrim energy. Um, so over here, back to over here, like you are really, like the truth of it is you're following your heart. You're following what makes you feel like in love with life again. What makes you feel in love with yourself again. This energy is like very much making you not that for the most part. Um, but that being said, there is a resolution that is coming where I'm going to get more cards. I feel like that it's going to be your side of the kind of story is going to be made more clear in the future upcoming yeah four of pentacles four of cups four of four of swords interesting three fours four 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 if you see four 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 and you feel it's a synchronicity then it's related to this area yeah, okay. And I mean, fours are stability, right? So it's like you're trying to figure out 
Okay, so it's, a, it's like Four of Pentacles is like your financial stability or material stability. You are holding on to something, like preventing others from taking it away from you because you're trying to sustain yourself. And then there's Four of Cups, which usually denotes depression, which it does. But I feel like in this context, it's more, again, like a self-preservation meaning, as in you're trying to really keep like these cups to yourself so that uh, nobody can make you feel like unstable and then four of swords here um that's like the literal rest you taking that time to pause your brain you know calm your mental energy and make sure you're actually rejuvenated i feel like your side of the story that's going to come more clear is explaining this situation in greater detail um what else i feel like you are going to the forest yeah i feel like this is more like other people like not being able to see the forest through the trees kind of energy the mystic on the back mm, interesting they it's like you're helping them to see what you're experiencing with full clarity and also this idea that the situation isn't serving you. And that you're not willing to accept anything that isn't serving you. So I feel like this important event, the reason it's being kind of like brought to light is that, again, you will get the chance to explain all of this and it, there will be that kind of neutral resolution that comes at the end. So I feel like this specifically is like it's being brought to my mind like if you feel like you incurred losses with this situation um just reassurance that like don't worry there will be a way to balance this out <clears throat> i get this energy like you there's like again like some reason you can't leave like immediately and it's like if you do leave immediately, you will incur a lot of losses that you can't like afford or like you don't have the capability or the resources to take that on right now. And I feel like with the mystic up here, I think psychically, you know, intuitively, spiritually, whatever you want to call it, you know that it's almost like you've been synchronistically led into this situation. So, you know, there's something you're supposed to get out of it. Um, and I feel like on the 5D level, you understand that like things will balance out on a 3d level things will also balance out so if you've literally lost like resources or something assets then you will get them back i want to say you will even get more than you're expecting is what my my gut feels like yeah again like there's a neutral resolution to this where everything will work out um, it'll be on your terms. It'll make the situation tolerable. It'll allow you to minimize your involvement. Yeah, the village as uh, pointing east. Interesting. So it's in the in the guidebook for this card. It has to do with like leaving like the village after you've grown up and like learned life lessons and whatnot. There's this sense here that, like, I think you'll just, I think the result of this is, like, you are going to make it clear to them that, like, you don't want to stay. There's no reason for you to stay. It doesn't match what you want to do. It makes you sick. It makes you feel like, you know, you failed at the things that you were trying to get out of this situation. Um, but at the same time, Again, because it's pointing east as well, there is some resolution. So I think like I think the re the reason this reading's coming through is because I think you were expecting it again to like incur a lot of losses and just be like really stressful. There will be something that makes this again like possible to recoup the things that you lost or you feel you lost, and even more than that, but still allow you the flexibility to kind of get out of it at your um, at a at a desired timeline that meets mm, kind of like everyone's expectations um and by that i mean kind of like not trapping you there for too too long i feel like there is some sort of like you have to live out the timeline still in order to recoup these 
resources. It has more to do with, like, I feel like people are going to be more cooperative with you. Like, it has less to do with altering, like, the conditions on which you are able to stay or leave. Rather that you're going to make it very clear, like, my intention is not to stay here in the long term, but I want to make it, you know, still like a win-win situation for everyone. So let's, like, be honest about, you know, what's the reality that's happening here? You know, what's the situation? What are my original intentions? And kind of clarifying, like, you know, I'm still on your side, but... This isn't what I want and you can't keep me here. You can't force me to stay. So why don't we just make this work out with each other rather than, you know, like you keep force trying to force me to stay and I keep resisting and there's always like weird friction or tension. So yeah, basically the message is the resolution is coming. The resolution is coming. The resolution is coming. Um, any more messages? Just feeling this out. Um, I'll get one more card just to close. Okay, Queen of Cups. Um, the fact that this is sideways. Yeah, okay. I want to say the message here is just don't expect too much of the situation either though. Okay, so like one thing that could potentially be more of like an emotional and spiritual trap is... Because I think this conversation, this encounter interaction is going to go better than you expect. But don't let that put like rose colored glasses on you. I feel like you might get, I don't want to say promise things, but people might kind of portray an intention as if they really, really strongly want to help you. And like kind of like aggrandize, is that a word? Like kind of like want to give you grandiose offers. So just make sure you're discerning. Don't feel like if you feel really in like quickly swept up into like almost kind of like a love bombing ish emotions just be cognizant that like you're having a physiological reaction but like the reality of how the situation is is still very much present in the background so don't fall in love with it too much don't um you know just like be discerning don't be naive i feel like this isn't like new to you in any way i don't feel like i'm talking to someone who's like necessarily struggling with that but just be aware i guess this is just extra validation and protection that if you do feel those kind of like lovey-dovey feelings come up because you feel really appreciated in the moment uh it's very much kind of just confined to the moment and i feel like that kind of echoes like this page of cups energy here too where this isn't even necessarily just your energy. I feel like it will be the other people's energy too, where, yeah, okay, the, the message of like immaturity is coming through where they really just want you. Okay, I'm getting called to like, you know, that concept of how animals, certain animals, like cats, for example, um, we, at least so far, as far as we know with current science, that they can't really understand more complex emotions like guilt, but they will do things like, let's say they upset you, like, I don't know, they knock something over then they will look at you um, in hopes to, it's like if you react in a way that shows distress, then they'll look up at you and try to get you to react in a positive way. And then that way they're like, okay, now we're cool. I'm not in danger. Like that's kind of the reaction that these people are going to give you. They want to see and experience you just be like in a positive energy with them. Um, no tension, no conflict. But they're not like, it's not like queen or king of, you know, cups where they are mature and are kind of thinking about, you know, what's the past, present, future of the situation? You know, how are we going to kind of sustain this energy in the long run? This is very much not where these people are at. So just be aware that, again, there might be some pleasant emotions that come out of this, but it's very momentary. And it's kind of up to you to be the more mature one in the situation and like really you know, see through if they are overpromising, like that's, you know, them overpromising and that's like a reality that's not, you know, representative of the actual situation. The actual situation is very much still happening, very real and very like, very much still kind of poisoning you on some level. Um, but again, it's not over and you will be, you're well equipped to be able to kind of hold the poison off, so to speak. Like, you know how to kind of keep it at a distance and not let it affect you too much. All right. 
I hope that um, this helps with whatever the situation is. So far, this and the first timeline have both been like kind of stressful situations. So I'm sorry that you're going through this. And I really hope that, you know, this resolution is truly like beneficial and relaxing and, you know, not stressful. So thank you so much for watching. Um, thank you so much for supporting me in the channel. Um, if you want to support me, there is a tip jar in the description. Always appreciated, but never obligated. There's also private readings listed if you want to buy a private reading. Um, uh, and if you want to support me, um, please do feel free to like the, the video if you liked the content. Share it with your friends if you feel like they would benefit. Um, comment below if you want to share your experience because I love reading people's experiences. It makes me so happy to just like see other people's timelines play out. Um, and um, please do subscribe. That's the best way you can help the channel grow um, by subscribing to the channel. So you'll always know when new readings come out. Thank you so much again. I love you all so much and take care. Have a wonderful rest of existence. Greetings, fellow Quirin. Welcome to timeline number three. If you picked the fault line upright, then this is your timeline. And this is a rather fairly generic reading. We're looking at order or what is an important event that is upcoming that your guides or the universe wants to um, give you insight for or warn you about things that might come up. So, and this is interesting because the idea of warning is coming up through this timeline specifically a lot more. Um, so the fault line, it feels like there's something breaking apart here. It feels like some sort of partnership or connection is crumbling away like I'm really when I look at this I see like the 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 pieces of what I guess it's like stone or concrete you know falling away like being chipped away it feels like the stability of a certain situation is falling away there's some sort of um there's some sort of like non-negotiable um I guess like conflict and yeah, I don't know, I'm just getting like a really official separation kind of vibe. Like this is like, it's illegal or something. There's a legal aspect to it. Oh, geez. There's uh, multiple people with the way that the, the fragments in whatever the material is. Uh, why are these falling everywhere? Why, <laughs> why am I struggling right now? Um, yeah, it feels like there's multiple people involved many people involved and it's like the, this separation is going to cause a rift in a lot of people as well yeah i'm seeing this idea of like it's almost like legacy wars or like family wars where um it's like people take sides and getting a lot about like there's confusion around there, on one hand, people feel the need to do what they feel is the right thing, but on the other hand, they may have loyalties to people that are kind of like considered family. Like, even if they're not blood family, it's like they, as a social circle, consider each other family. Um, I just heard unhealthy boundaries as well, so it can be like not necessarily a like when I state those two dynamics, it's not necessarily in a balanced and healthy way either. Um, okay, interesting. So that's a lot to start off with. Let's get into it. Seven of Pentacles, that's Northwest. We have Eight of Cups, that's pointing West. Yeah, something's not working. Five of Wands, interesting. That came out in the last timeline around the same, like, uh, area on the board justice okay interesting we did mention that legal component mm. someone's like not allowed to work somewhere anymore yeah i feel my <laughs> i feel my like my body says yes someone's not going to be allowed to work somewhere anymore And they are, I just heard like probation, this idea of like, they're going to be taken out of an environment, of an environment 
for like a specific amount of time. I, I, I get this feeling of like they're going to be shamed for it too. So it's almost like if they... I feel like they did something that was illegal, but it wasn't super severe, hence the justice like not being completely reversed. It's kind of just like a big no-no. Um, but the reputation of the people related to this person, it's like they don't want to be associated with that. So they're kind of like putting this person on probation to see if they if their behavior changes. Or if they... There's more to this. Why are they keeping this person, like, in this state? Um, like, it's a little bit to punish them. It's a little bit... There's some sort of strategic, like... There's, there's like, other things depending on this relationship. So they have to keep, like, some sort of, like, access to this person. And it would be worse to try to put this person, um, like it would be worse to, let's say, like try to sue this person or try to out this person more publicly. Yeah. So it's like law enforcement, it doesn't seem like this is something like law enforcement knows, but it's almost like they got audited and we're found to be doing something that's a big no-no that is... It's kind of like, I think it technically is illegal, but it's also like they can, they probably can easily sneak out of it. Like there's a way to convince the regulating authorities in this situation, um, which is still stressful, but it's like, it's something about like, they've heard of other people getting out of the same charge. So... They definitely, it's not like they feel like it's impossible to get out of. It's just that it's going to cost them a lot of time and energy and resources. But the other people in the situation, they don't want to be tied to this person because even though this person can get out of it, it's like we just don't want the drama of, you know, things being done improperly. Yeah, okay. So they're kind of hoping this person may look with them at themselves. Um, like they are kind of trying to give this person a chance. Uh, there's something too about, oh, I see. It would be kind of difficult to, um, to continue operating whatever this is without this person there. Like, it would be more difficult if they were just, like, completely, like, exiled from the situation. Uh, so it's like they, they, if they can, they want to find a workaround to make this work somehow. But it's, like, the, the kind of, like, tightrope that they're walking on, metaphorically speaking, is tight. Like, it's very, it's tight and fragile and about to break. Yeah, interesting. Okay. Strength north, east, six of pentacles, or sorry, six of, is that pen six of cups in reverse? No, six of pentacles, six of pentacles in reverse. Okay. Um, with the six of pentacles in reverse, I'm getting this idea they won't be trusted. And I'm finding it interesting that there's like children depicted on this card in this way. Um, it's kind of like this energy of you know when you're with people that are safe and it's like your inner children come out and you are spontaneous and like relaxed and like silly because you don't like you know it's a safe space and like you know that's like what children experience a lot of the time in their like if they're like in, in an unharmed state and this person basically like they're losing the ability for that state to exist between them and whoever else is involved in this situation. So if there's other people where they were like very chummy or like very like buddy buddy, like that energy has gone. 
And this person really needs that energy to validate themselves. This is going to be a massive, like, they have, like, the legal stress and then they also have the stress of, uh, like, they have to face their own insecurities and the weight of that, those insecurities because they won't have people validating them all the time anymore. I just heard, I just heard they got them in trouble. They got them in trouble. I'm seeing, I think there's a group. There's a smaller group and then there's other groups. And so it's like their whole group is in trouble now. It's like like little, t it's like teams within a bigger team and their team is in trouble. Uh, I'm just I'm hearing the word snitch. Like I think they're going or they already have. Mm. Like, I think they're already, um, even this person's own team, I think, is already snitching on them. Quote unquote snitching, it's actually more like they're upholding the integrity of the situation. Um, it just, it seems like snitching to this person. So it's like the, the other couple of people on this person's, like, team, out of the wider team, they have already, like, this, this, whatever happened here is acknowledged and known by everyone on the greater team. So, like, the people on their smaller sub team, it, they. I'm just saying, like, they're really mad because they, now they're all in, technically in trouble. Um, they would be able to put it on this person if they all kind of, like, team up together and go against, pit, pit themselves against this person. But if they cooperate with this person, then they, they can all get out of it. So the people on the, on the team are, they're trying to figure out what they want. They're trying to figure out if they want to, um, keep being with this person or if they just all, or if they want to join other people in taking them down. But it's like, it's hard because there's no guarantee that the other people will stay on their side. Uh, but I do think they trust the other people more than the person that we're talking about here. So people are widely leaning towards not this person. Getting this person in trouble. Or like having them bear the brunt of like the blame, basically. Yeah. Okay, that was intense <laughs> to start off with. Um, what else do you need to know? What else do you need to know? I don't want to make these messages too long, so I'm just going to kind of do a row down here to um, just figure out what the what's sort of like the reason you need to be aware of this. Um, geez, okay, that's a lot of, like, cards about totality. <laughs> okay, oh, geez, the healer on the back. That's her turnaround, turnaround. Oh, everything's going to change. Everything's going to change. Um... So the reason your guys are bringing this forward is so that I feel like you are sort of going back and forth, not even back and forth. Like you are kind of like going through a lot of trying to figure out what's the best outcome possible here and like kind of like looking into a lot of timelines just like in your head or however, however you do that and trying to figure it out. Like you're trying to just get out of it with the least possible harm or damage to yourself and to everyone else um and also the the like least possible energy investment as well but it's going to change so like this issue is going to be dealt with yeah big nod from my intuition this person this person is going to be dealt with other people are going to take over the role of this person. 
Um, and so if you generally were on good terms with everyone else, then it's like you can come back. Yeah, big nod on that. Whoa, I'm, I'm like feeling on my stomach. Um, yeah, it's sort of like these three cards are all just like, it's going to transform and the whole picture is going to be very clear soon. And it's going to be brought to you by someone else. So obviously, like, you might get, you know, messages, signs, synchronicities, whatever. Um, you might be able to find, you know, people or channeling about it or channel about it by yourself, but you will get a 3D, like, like very distinct, this is what's going on. And, like, these are the interactions that um, need to be or want to be salvaged by this group. Yeah. You are very much to them in Queen of Pentacles energy. It's funny, there was a... That was also in the last spread. Rosie, baby. Come here. Come here, baby. Um... So... Hold on a sec, there's totally more. I'm just, like... She distracted me. <laughs> Rosie, baby. Yeah. Okay, now I know, baby, please. After? After? Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, it's just your guides are bringing this forward just so you know that there's a lot more to the picture that I think you're kind of already aware of, but I feel like you don't really see it as something that can change necessarily. Or like it would take away too much effort to change. It will is what I'm feeling strongly. Yeah, I think you're really not expecting this. And what you don't, I guess, like, see from your perspective, I think, is you are appearing as this Queen of Pentacles to the people in this situation. Ah, even if you don't feel like it, it's like their perception is you have everything, you've got it all, and you are very stable and reliable. Um... Yeah, okay. I think that's kind of everything. I, f I like almost want to say more, but I feel like I might just be repeating by then. So <laughs> thank you so much for watching. I hope this this gives you some insight as, as to what's happening. That was a pretty like thorough vision right there. Um, but yeah, I wish you luck with this. I wish you only the greatest abundance in this situation. And I feel like it's interesting because I don't feel like you're particularly phased by this. It's almost like for you, something kind of happening in the background. Um, and it really only maybe affects you mentally right now once in a while. But like you're not. It's very like hands off, like not super involved, like things are just happening around you. So, yeah, very interesting. But I hope this gives you the insight that you need. Um, and I really hope that you can navigate this situation in a way that is pleasant in the future <laughs> so thank you so much for watching i'm so so glad and grateful to um be able to read your energy if you'd like to support me i do have a um tip jar in the description if you'd like to feel generous and contribute always appreciated but of course never obligated i also do have private readings if you'd like a private reading from me um and if you want to support me with the videos, you can also like the video um, if you liked the content, share it with your friends if you feel like it would benefit them. Comment down below what your experience has been because I love reading all of your timelines and seeing how you experience them. And um, yeah, the best, the best way we can support is to subscribe to the channel. So if you like my videos, please do check out the other ones, come back to the channel and subscribe so that you can never miss the next videos. Alrighty, take care. Have a wonderful rest of existence.
Greetings fellow Aquarians, welcome to timeline number four. If you picked the creator upright, then this is your reading and we're doing a relatively kind of generic what are um, what is an important event coming up next that you need to be aware of or that it would be helpful for you to have some insight into. Um, so yeah, let's take a look. Not too much of a preamble. It's pretty straightforward. <laughs> Uh, I'm getting a really good energy. This is definitely like the, the nicest energy out of all the timelines so far. The first three were very like kind of dense, like a bit conflict ridden, a bit heavy energy. Yeah. Okay. So I'm the creator. All right. That just felt right out. So I'm, I'm going to take this. Interesting. Okay. Immediately, I'm getting from this, you are going to be released from the burden of being stuck in an indecision state and really kind of suffering from it. Um, yeah, interesting. Okay, and so we have ten of wands in reverse, the devil in reverse, two of uh, swords upright, and page of pentacles over here in reverse. From the page of pentacles in reverse, I'm getting this idea that... Um, I think you had a fear of people seeing you as immature. Yeah, and I feel like it came from just like having to grow up too fast and then you it's sort of like that that cycle of like you grow up too fast because um you didn't have everything taken care of when you were younger and then People call you like an old soul or wise or whatnot, um, which is true, very much so. But then that instills like a deep-seated subconscious like aversion to youngness. Like it's almost like if people call you young or the or other words that imply something like that. So like cute, for example, um, it can sometimes trigger a feeling of. I feel like they're commenting on on like me being immature like it that's like the relationship your subconscious has with the idea of like being young because it's so used to having to be like kind of like the adult in a lot of situations Rosie hey Dino Reno so I hope her meow wasn't too loud over all of that <laughs> But yeah, so it feels like that has been a block to you expressing your creativity. Rosie, baby. Rosie. She has done this every timeline. Like, very rarely does it outside of when I'm doing readings. So I'm like so sure. She's just trying to get my attention. Oh gosh, we had so many cuddles and so many play times today. You know? Um, but they always want my attention when I'm up here. <laughs> Um, but yeah, okay, so this block, though, it felt like there was just always this wall of you want to be kind of more spontaneous and, like, it's not so much naive, but it's presenting as that carefree aspect of, like, the pages. Because that actually is, like, an energy that draws people in. People love it when they feel released from their their earthly worries and matters. And that's what you bring to people that's in general what creativity brings there's also a bit of a comedic energy i feel like you're good at being funny um and so people feel really free when they're around you but there was something about you like uh, feeling like you can't express yourself and now this is interesting because this is pentacles i'm getting this idea that specifically you had things holding you back in terms of like your material stability Rosie, baby. Oh my goodness, sorry, one second. Baby. Not right now, baby. <laughs> um, it's like there was like a shame around your material state, and so therefore you felt just almost like kind of hyper vigilant of if I express myself a certain way, am I going to be perceived as this? Kind of like a, a figure or a character that can't take care of themselves. Um, and that translates in a lot of ways. It can be 
like a very physical way where it's like maybe people will see like the clothes you're wearing and make like inferences about your material state or <laughs> these two <laughs> um or like it, it can also be people looking at you and feeling like um i don't know it's like self-care habits like judging your self-care habits uh, I think something you're not seeing too is that you take care of yourself really well. <laughs> I think you have a very, like, no offense, but I think your perception of how you manage yourself and take care of yourself is a lot different than you think it is. I think you are a lot more critical of yourself than is actually perceived by people. But so, like, this part of your subconscious was creating this block where it's like, I, I get really, like, tight in the throat and the heart, where it's like, I'm trying to express almost like a silly energy, like a playful energy a carefree energy but then there's this block because it's like almost everything you say has to go through like a filter of like oh but am i exposing like a part of myself um and that i don't want people to see and i feel like there's a lot more people that that don't see you in the same way that you see yourself it's not to say you know there aren't people that are you know very perceptive out there and that can kind of like maybe privy to being able to read into your your life and your situation just like intuitively um, or by other means some sort of like specialty um, like let's say if they're very good at psychology or something but like it's also like you're karmically protected so it only happens to people you have karma with where you are trying to te like it's like your higher selves are teaching each other lessons so it's really like that block was a more in it's self-generated and perceived it's self-generated, but then perceived as an other by your shadow. So the flow is like blocked and you felt very um, burdened and very attached to this burden. It was like, it's like an, an attachment to just feeling indecisive. Like everything you do is just a constant battle in your head. And uh, it's not like... Um, like, it's so hard to make a decision. Like, you're constantly thinking about things. Or at least in the past, that's how it has been. So, I feel like... Yeah, okay. And there's, so, there's some sort of financial stability. Some sort of goal you're trying... You have been trying to reach for a long time. And it's like you've... You feel like you've just barely made it like you've had to rely on a lot of things you weren't ever expecting to have to rely on in order to achieve it um and it's giving much of the energy of like the things you intentionally tried to do like weren't meant for you so they just kind of fell through and then you would randomly receive like resources from other means just like it would just manifest out of thin air almost but it's still not enough and so i don't want to say you're confused because i feel like the the reasons why these things karmically happened um i feel like you're kind of already aware of them but um i feel like you felt very attached to like an indecision about what should i do to be able to generate more and i think you had then you also settled on the the decision that your creativity is going to generate an income or at least one income stream and income stream or several um yeah king of swords pointing that way west but like uh it, the indecision around which one to pick and then managing the energy around how do i have enough creativity like where do i invest my energy it feels like it's just been an ongoing battle for like a really long time the block is lifting though like i said at the beginning like it's you're getting shown this so that you can acknowledge it consciously and like just let it be able to subconsciously let it go um, pull a couple here. Yep, 
Yeah, Ten of Pentacles reverse, Six of Pentacles upright, Page of Cups reverse. Yeah, also an emotional vulnerability that was difficult for you to capture in the past. And I feel like you still are perhaps trying to act, understand what that means in specific contexts. Because I get the sense you're probably, like you're, not probably, you are very multi-talented is the energy I'm getting. Um, so it feels like in some talents, I feel like you're, you already have kind of come to being able to express yourself in a way that you feel is really like right for you is really representative of what you're trying to put out into the world. But like these other people, um, these other people, <laughs> these other aspects of yourself, it's like there's other talents where you don't, it's almost like you haven't found your voice in that specific talent. You haven't found what your aesthetic is or your sound or your, um, timbre is and it's i get this feeling of like it's like you have desire to try some of these other ideas out to try to attain that stability but then there's like this like overwhelming like emotional block of um i mean like one not wanting to fail again but two uh it's it almost feels like it's just so hard to envision like what you, what your essence, like how it appears or what it feels like, what your style is. Yeah, and I get this feeling like you were having trouble figuring out what that was. And I, I feel like for some of these talents, you still are in this process as well. It's not like a one and done kind of thing. Um, okay, so yeah, three of, three of swords on the back. That's it. <laughs> I thought this was going to be the nicest timeline. I mean, technically it is because I mean, the overall message here is that you're moving through this and it's only going to keep getting better. Um, but yeah, let's keep looking. What's other specific messages related to this do we have? Animal Monday that came out in the last timeline too. Hmm, interesting. Okay. Interesting. Okay mystic with animal money so i'm getting this idea of totality which i talked about in timeline three that was like a really specific timeline though so definitely don't don't feel like that's necessarily a synchronicity if you don't feel called to it um but animal monday i get this feeling of it's almost like and the six of pentacles up right down here there's like a detachment that's going to come from your creativity and this idea that it's going to make you money, which is, I feel like is ironic because it's almost like you feel like you're on the verge of succeeding. But I guess that's the thing when you manifest, it actually is when you let go of things that like it comes in, right? There's a detachment here of like, just kind of looking at it and being like, you know what? Like, I just need to express like a raw expression of myself. Um... It's given kind of like practicing in the mirror energy where you're just like trying things. It's, I feel like it's, the feeling is like you're going to get over this hurdle of feeling like I'm not sure what to do. Feeling that really hard in the solar plexus. I think it comes out of, um, there's questions about identity on the subconscious level where you're not sure, like, what am I supposed to sound like? What am I supposed to appear as? I'm not really sure like what my whole identity is or like how... A, a, a specific portrayal of of a thing like how that represents my whole identity it's like an unsurety of how far away from your actual self you want it to be and also how far away from yourself that you want others to perceive it as and i think you're going to release that because i feel like when you're trying to do something where the, it requires like creativity and spontaneity. There's this block of, again, feeling like everything has to go through a filter and um, you need to kind of like vet it. I think you're releasing that fear around like I'm going to misrepresent myself. That's basically the fear. I'm going to misrepresent myself. 
whether it's by like saying something wrong or just like the wrong tone or like doing something physically that's like I don't know just perceived wrongly for whatever reason um there's going to be a detachment from that fear and that creativity that's really centering the reading is going to rush through and it's going to be just be like a lot less strenuous to access that flow state obviously assuming that you know you take care of your your health and whatnot but it's not going to seem like such an uh, like a, a daunting thing that is difficult to overcome i feel like you're you're mastering the skill of learning is kind of how it's coming across like you are mastering the ability to spontaneously try new things and you know like I guess, like, learn what you need to learn, come to the conclusions that you need to come to, um, you know, have the confidence that even if it doesn't work out properly or exactly how you thought it would, you still are taking the benefits from the situation and, you know, like, you still are learning a lot. Mm. And so in that, like, there's this detachment happening where you will continue to be able to access your flow state a lot easier. Now, let's talk about these two, because it's also very significant energies. The Nectar Southwest and the Mystic Southeast, basically. Um, yeah, the Nectar, Nectar is giving me definitely, like, sexuality. The Mystic, obviously, mystical things. There's something about... I think you're detaching also from the idea that you need to have a certain appeal... Um, both physically and uh, not even physically, it's it's almost more just like the energy of like attraction. You're detaching from the expectation. It's not even so much you're detaching from doing it. It's more the detachment from the expectation that let's say if I, I don't know, like let's say dress up more or like wear a certain style more or something, then that will make me more money. You're kind of like detaching from the idea that that is the specific thing and more it's almost like just from just detaching that idea you are in essence reaffirming to your aura that you believe no matter how like no matter what variant of yourself you show up in it's still one that is worthy and it like positively expressive and it brings like goodness to the world Likewise with the mystic, it's the same sort of concept where I think you had maybe an attachment of like, if you appear more, I don't know, like spiritual and powerful, I want to say as well, then that is going to bring you again, more money. Like it's like, that'll heighten your value. But again, there's like this like surrender of you detach from that expectation and it's sort of like however you show up is how is just exactly how spiritual and how powerful you feel in that specific day. And, you know, the outcomes will happen regardless of whether or not you try to show up in that energy. And it's like this weird paradox of like, because you're not trying to show up in these energies, they actually naturally manifest around you faster. Yeah, wow, well, okay. What's the outcome of this, of this energy? What else is the outcome? Knight of Swords in reverse. Eight of Cups. I just heard Wander. So the Knight of Swords, I was getting like, you won't have to do nearly as much as you think you do to achieve what you want to achieve. Um, the Eight of Cups, I feel like you'll be wandering. I'm getting very lone wolf energy. I think this is what you wanted, though. Like, you you want the freedom. And your creativity is going to unlock your freedom. Yeah, you want to go away with the Six of Swords. Like, you want to go and experience things. And you want to, you want to have good times. You want to celebrate. You want to have fun um, with the Four of Wands here. Uh, interesting. And then, so, King of Pentacles. This is pointing west. These are perpendicular cards, too. So, the fact this is over the Six of Pentacles... I feel like in the future, um, people are really going to take care of you. Yeah. 
you are going to be surprised yes yeah yeah sorry <laughs> just like really feeling i've i've kind of like learned how to really just suspend like the tension in my stomach and use it like a pendulum so it's kind of like i don't know it's intense sometimes because when i like feel like it's a yes it's like really like <laughs> yeah um but i feel like you won't have to do a lot there's a lot of timelines where they're kind of destined for you and it's very like yin energy where you are just supposed to exude like good energy not to say don't do things but like again it's just less effort than you're going to imagine um you are going to be wandering around you're going to be very like in control of where you're going how you go there it's going to be very on your own terms and you're going to be able to celebrate with people and people are really going to take care of you. Um, like I get this idea of people like flying you places. Um, I get this idea of people like giving you places to stay. There's people who they might just give you money. <laughs> I feel like there are going to be people, yeah. There are going to be people who just give you money and lots of different denominations, um, like dollars to like thousands of dollars is what I'm seeing. Yeah, because people just want you around. I mean, like not just want you around. You're like amazing. <laughs> like, they obviously, you know, this energy is beautiful, so they want you. They want to experience it. But, <laughs> but like they really just like it's almost like they're not expecting. They would be honored and glad and, you know, exhilarated to have you give something to them in these interactions or meetings. But it's not necessary. Like, they're not expecting it from you, which is so such a sweet energy. Like, people just want to enjoy being with you and they're going to show you with their money. <laughs> they're going to show you with their money. Um, yeah. Yeah, you're going to be very surprised, I think. <laughs> um, okay. One last, let's do one last card over here. Yeah, the tower in reverse. Oh my god, like something's really going to shift. And that's funny because I think a lot, all four of these timelines have really talked about like something shifting. Though I'd say the the last time, timeline three and this one are definitely the most dramatic, but um. There's definitely something you can't quite see clearly that's like gonna happen soon ish. Soon ish. Yeah. I wanna say like within a month. And um yeah, it's going to set you on this path of being able to again that access that creativity and your creativity is going to attract so much. It's going to attract so much you're not going to have to you know um give up any of the freedom that you were trying to manifest and you're gonna have a good time <laughs> all right wow amazing reading that's a uh, really powerful i'm really excited for you i think all the other the other poor timelines were like very dramatic and dense like i said but this one's like okay Things are going to come to a resolution. It's nice. Um, all right. Thank you so much for letting me read your energy. It was such a pleasure. It was so fun. I loved um, experiencing what you're going to experience. So thank you so much for supporting me. Yeah, Five of Wands, Inspiration, and the Poet. Lots of just... And this Five of Wands, I'm getting in a positive energy too. Like It's just like there's going to be lots of ideas... With all these mirrors, I get this feeling of like you just writing in like different notepads and being able to express yourself in different ways and get and get that expression out. Um, yeah. Anyway, sorry, extra side message. If you want to support me, though, please do, you know, like, share, comment, subscribe. Um, there is a tip jar in the description below if you want to support the channel. Always appreciate it. Never obligated. There is a link also to private readings. And if you want to like the video, like it, please. If you want to share the video with your friends, if you think they'd benefit, please do. If you would like to share your experience in the comments, I love reading your experiences. And subscribing is the best way you're going to help this channel grow. And you can see all of my new content when it comes out. So... Thank you so much again. I love you and please do, I hope, please do come back. I hope to see you in another reading. Have a wonderful rest of existence.